What's up my little flowers? Welcome back to hell. Firstly, let me just start by saying thank you so much for all the support on my recent unpopular opinions video. It genuinely made me so excited to see that more than two people saw it. Also, to my new subscribers, hello. Thank you so much for subscribing. It means more than you know. Also, if you perhaps aren't really into TXT, and you're a new subscriber, then don't worry. I make videos on all different groups, so just let me know what kind of video you would like to see next in the comments. And to all the new viewers, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It takes 2 seconds, but it really makes my whole day. Alright, now onto the video. So, I'm just gonna say it. TXT has no bad songs. I said what I said. I genuinely believe that they have one of the best discographies of any K-pop group. I mean. Just throw them all in the top tier and be done with it. Disclaimer, if I rank your favorite song low, please don't take offense to it because even the lowest song I still really love and listen to a lot. I by no means dislike any of these songs, and that's why it was so hard to make this list. In my experience, typically fans of TXT seem to have one of two tastes, and what I mean by that is, I've noticed that there are two opposite ends of the spectrum. Like if Magic is your favorite TXT album, then songs off of Eternally are probably lower on your list and vice versa. Just know before we get into this that I love sad songs and dark concepts so that should already spell out my ranking for you. Also, please note that this list was made before the comeback that literally happened a few days ago. Let's look at the Tez now. First we have, Call Me Remy the Rat because this is just chef's kiss. Pretty much any song in this tier is just absolute perfection, and that's all I have to say about that. Next we have, my group's debut track at 3am. So songs in this tier are still great songs. In fact, they are the songs that I dance around to and pretend that my fake K-pop group just made a comeback to. Side note, if you haven't pretended to debut in a group and perform the choreography at insane hours of the night, I don't know what to tell you. You're missing out. The third tier is, might fuck around and read fan fiction to this. The songs in this tier don't have to be slow, background songs. Any song can go in this tier because it basically means I like the song, but I usually just play it in the background rather than give it my full attention all the time. Next we have, the iconic sand sanitizer. If you haven't seen that clip you're really missing out. So basically this tear is reserved for songs that are still decent, but they just felt like they were missing something or a few letters got mixed up. There is just something that stops me from liking the song as much as I do the rest. And lastly, you'll know damn well nothing's going in this tear. That's it. No song is bad enough to be ranked in the bottom tear. Okay, now onto the ranking. Blue Orange Aid. This song still bangs even after all this time. It still somehow manages to hold its place in the icon hall. I remember listening to this debut album when it came out, and this song was immediately one of my favorites. It's just so catchy. Crown. This is seriously one of the best debut tracks I've ever heard. Next to an high pens given taken. Big Hit just knows how to bust out a group. I listened to this song when it first dropped so it holds a lot of nostalgia for me. Like many BTS fans. I was excited for the debut of a new boy group by Big Hit, but I was also nervous that they couldn't live up to the hype. These boys shut my ass up real fast. Our summer. Okay, this song is literally so cute, and it was definitely a nice slower break from the previous two hype songs. I really like this song, but I'm still gonna place it below Blue Orange Aid, and I might get cancelled for that. Also, the closer I rank the track to the tear list names, the more I like it. So, I'm ranking within the tears as well. So, basically I love this song. It's a cute little bop. Cat and dog. The icon herself has arrived. I know this song is meme to death, but it's still catchy I don't know what that says about me but, this song bangs. Although, I can't listen to the English version. That one's just a little too weird. And one time I played it in my car in front of some friends that didn't listen to K-pop and, well, Let's just say I about threw myself out the windshield. But, Yeonjin's rap is iconic. Nap of a star. Alright, 
I might get some hate for this one, but, she's going in the sand hanatizer tear. Don't worry, I'm as disgusted with myself as you are. I normally love slow songs, like half of my playlist is depressed bitch bops, but for some reason this one just didn't hit for me. That's not to say it isn't a pretty song, because it is still gorgeous and the vocals are immaculate as always, but I just haven't listened to this song more than 10 times so I can't place it high. New rules. Alright, so, a little background about my relationship with the whole Magic album first. I didn't listen to it when it was released like the rest of the albums, so I don't have that special connection with it like I do with the rest of them. So, I might judge it unfairly. As far as new rules goes, it's a good song. It's definitely catchy, but it's going in the fanfiction tear because I don't really listen to it unless it comes up on my playlist while I'm doing something else. Like, I don't seek the song out, it finds me, and then I jam to it, run away. This song is so good, like, it just has this weird magic vibe to it and my Harry Potter fangirl heart is crying over it. I genuinely still listen to this song, and the whole bibbity bobbity thing is so cute. You already know I made my own mental music video to this song with me in it. Roller coaster. This song is just so weird, but in a good way. Like, it's not exactly retro but it feels like it is, and that really confuses me. And, I'm kinda mad because as I'm writing this now, I wanna move the song up, but regardless it's a good catchy song that I need to listen to more because I definitely slept on it. Pop Star. A controversial opinion is coming perhaps. So, I just don't care for this song. Like, don't get me wrong, it's really cute, but it's just not my style. Which is fine, if it's your favorite that's okay too. I just can't listen to it a whole lot and sometimes I skip it if it comes on. I don't know. I'm sorry for my trash opinions. I'll throw myself away now. Can't we just leave the monster alive? This is another song that I didn't listen to a lot after I first heard it, but now it's really grown on me. Like, this song should definitely be in some coming of age teen movie, and honestly it deserves more love. I feel like it's slept on. Shame on you all. Magic Island. Remy come cook up this song boy because it is perfection. I actually wasn't really familiar with it until recently, but it has quickly earned a top spot, and it deserves nothing less. I think it can be described as kind of simple, so if it's not your favorite I can understand that, but I really love it. I just wanna wave a light stick at their concert to this. 20 centimeters. The queen has arrived, and all other peasants can step aside. This song is just, chef's kiss. Like it's so different than anything I had heard being done in K-pop at the time. And Yeonjin's vocal runs alone put this song in the top tear. They ate this song up and left no crumbs. I hope she continues to get the recognition she deserves. Angel or devil. Alright. Another controversy is incoming. This song is really catchy. But it's just not for me. Like. I really haven't listened to it more than three times. And like I'm fine with that. Again. If you like it. That's fine. But it's not my taste. I think maybe my expectations were too high going into the song because the title is really good. Like, Angel or Devil seems like such a potentially dark song. And we had just finished listening to 20 centimeters, So I don't think she stood a chance in my ranking. I still can't rank it in the bottom though because it does still kinda bang. Drama. Everyone shut up. Here comes my favorite album. This opening track was just so good. Everything about it was perfection to me. Like, the concept and idea of the lyrics is so unique. Literally comparing your relationship to something out of a drama is such a good idea. And not to mention how catchy this song is. Can't you see me? The title track of the album. Let me just say, in my opinion, this video remains one of their best concepts and comebacks to date. I said what I said. Take it or leave it. I definitely play this song a lot and I can't stress that enough. Like I said before, I love docker concepts, so this one just banged. Also the bridge is absolutely iconic. Fairy of Shampoo. Can you guys tell I like sad music yet? This song is just so insane to me. Like, I believe that it's a remake of another song or something. I might be wrong and I only recently found that out, but this was just unlike anything I had ever heard in K-pop before. The instruments in this song are just sent from the mouth of God. And it is just so ethereal. I want more songs like this please. Sing me to sleep. Maze in the mirror. 
I almost place this song above Crown, but nostalgia won over for me. Regardless, this song is such a vibe, and it's literally so important to the fandom. Our boy Biomgi really helped write this shit, and on top of that I think it's about their trainee days or something. It's been a while since I read the lyrics, but, I could just cry, and I have cried to this song for sure. Anyone that doesn't like this song, you are entitled to your opinion, but please at least recognize how important it is for the boy's journey. Puma, they really said cat and dog but make it mature and thought we wouldn't notice, but I see everything, and this song is wild. I really love this song and the fact that this is my least favorite off the album and it's still in the top tier says something about this album. The visuals for this song. That's all I have to say for you to understand. Eternally. The baddest bitches arrived everyone. Let me just say that this song is one of the craziest, most experimental, songs I have ever heard. And I love it. They took such a big risk with this song. And it really paid off in my opinion. When I first heard it while listening to the album for the first time, I was like, okay this is really beautiful, it's going to be a nice, slow, reflective end to a slower album, and I love that. Then they hit me with Whiplash, and I haven't been the same since. They knew this song was that bitch when they released the longest music video possible for her. You'll better be paying this song her dues or else I'm gonna be mad. Everlasting Shine. So, I'm gonna keep real with you guys and tell you all that I didn't know this song existed, like dead ass, and I hate myself for it, I just normally sleep on the Japanese releases, even though those end up being some of the best, I don't know when I'm gonna learn my lesson, but put this song next to 17's Fallen Flower and BTS's Lights as the most slept on songs in my playlist, this song is such an absolute bop, and I'm all for blasting this song while reading some fanfiction. Ghosting. This song is just superior. I went into this album with really high hopes because I liked the Eternity album so much, and I feared that this one wouldn't be able to live up to it, but, this song just shooed all my fears away. I don't know why I like this song so much. Maybe it's the nostalgic feel it has, or maybe those lyrics just hit extra hard. Either way this song better be in yours top songs. Blue Hour. This song is just so cute. Like. I literally wanna stab my eyes out type of cute. And, as I said in my top K-pop songs of 2020 video, you guys already know that this song really made my little southern heart smile. When they stepped out in those Colonel Sanders, KFC, Doug Dimmadome type fits, I just lost it. The whole dance break is iconic. We lost the summer. This is the best TXT song hands down. There is no competition in my eyes. I mean besides it just being a really catchy and pretty song with beautiful visuals, of course we have to discuss the lyrical content which is immaculate. I mean there have been plenty of artists that have made songs inspired by the effects of the pandemic, but, this one just hit different. It is just such a good concept. The members are saying that we lost the summer, a time that is supposed to be worry free and a time spent with friends, and is bright and happy, was ripped from us so they compare it to an eternal winter. It's a song that shows not only the social effects of the virus, but also displays the importance of human beings to be social creatures for their own mental health. Wishlist. This song was a nice upbeat moment after the depressing song we just got past. I don't really have much to say about this song. Like, it wasn't my favorite off the album, but it's still an absolute bop, so it remains in high tier material. It just instantly puts me in a good mood, which is kinda hard to do. Way home. I think that this song was a nice way to end the album. It's got a good message to it, and a message that is especially relevant during the shit show that was 2020. It's not my favorite off the album production wise, but I still adore this song, and I constantly play it in the background of my life. Well, that's all the songs, and as you can see, the list is overwhelmingly positive. I've done another ranking video before, and it was on Blackpink. And that one was a bit more evenly spread out. But as I said before TXT just have a fantastic discography. You better not be sleeping on my boys. Thank you to anyone who watched this whole video. You mean the world to me. And to any of my new subscribers. Stick around because I have a few video ideas that will be coming in the next few days including videos such as K-pop besides that deserve better. The insane world of idol dating scandals. And another K-pop unpopular opinions video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you flowers in the next one.
Bye.